Alright, this Thresh, uh, this will be the first of a series of LOL, LOL Replay Reviews today. Um, we're gonna start the LOL Replay Review today with Thresh. Um, this guy basically says in the email, this was sen submitted to me five hours ago, uh, guy says, you know, this team, it starts at two minutes because he forgot to hit record, but nothing really happens in lane before then. Facing a team with a lot of global presence, uh, is not exactly sure when he's allowed to make plays, um, when he's allowed to go in and wants to, and wants to know, like, when he can know when ganks are coming. Okay, so that's what uh, that's what we're gonna be focused on right now, is going over those little details. Um, first thing I'm gonna say uh, is when, uh, obviously when you spike level two, Draven can win a two on two, but you have to basically hook Tristana. Uh, and it looks like you're not gonna be Oh, you might hit it. Yeah, there it is. There's the Tristana hit. Alright, let's talk about this trade here. You guys get into a good battle. And you lose. Let's figure out why you lose. Alright. <clears throat> so right away, you lock Tristana up. You're autoing. You're smacking. You're autoing. You're autoing. Now you're stuttering. Where's your autos this whole time, dude? Why are you running away? Why aren't you just autoing? No one's on you. Look at all this time spent. A lot of, a lot of chasing and not autoing. <clears throat> So let's back this up to where you stopped autoing. So you're in here. You try to flay. Guy jumps out. That's fine. First thing I'm going to tell you is, believe it or not, you could just save your flay there. And just make him jump and then flay uh, Leona back to you. Or just walk at Tristana while Draven kills Leona. Because you have your flay. And you have plenty of health. And you have exhaust. Um, I feel like you're not really thinking ahead in this trade at all and it's the same concept as like any lane uh, Anticipate what people are going to do in response and then mind game them a little bit You know that once Tristana's locked into place, she has to jump away, right? So just auto him and walk at him then when he jumps away zone him off while Draven kills Leona and the exhaust times out You see this would have been a lot cleaner so this, the way that it plays out instead, is that Draven gets CC'd, but you're not zoning Tristana off. She's not going to just kill you flat out. You have exhaust, and you could have been autoing her the whole time and buying space. You have the biscuits running, so you're fine. You're not going anywhere. You still have your flash. You're not going anywhere. Let this, use this health. You know, use that HP. Here, you just kind of walk around. Auto this fucking Tristana, and, and... And threaten the damage here this whole time you could be damaging this guy but instead you just kind of walk around forever this is all autoing opportunities you see and look how close this shit gets because she has no cooldowns right now Her cooldowns are gone you see that's why you have to maximize all opportunities to auto Thankfully, Leona blocks the hook, and that's what saves him there. Um, but again, let's back this up. When you go for a trade, look at this trade, okay? You go in. Draven goes in. Great hook. Good job. You know that this guy is going to jump away, right? You know it. Don't just flay for the sake of flaying. Think about it, and continue the press pressure with the flay up. And zone that Tristana off. Instead, what you do is you just kind of use your flay because you hook, not really thinking about the consequences. Then Draven gets a f gets engaged on for free by Leona, and then Leona face tanks for Tristana, who deals a fuck ton of damage. All right. So anticipate action before it happens. 
That'll help you along. That'll that'll bring you a long way. You outplay them both though. Double kill. I'm happy you get the double kill. I think that could have been a lot cleaner though. Did you played that better? You weren't Draven getting those kills. Uh, what do you buy here? I'd probably be buying like. No, I'd probably be buying like a Sightstone or Mobies or something. Or, or ruby crystal and boots I guess it would be ruby crystal and boots don't 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 upgrade this right away fuck that that is a good battle though good lay down notice I'm not even commenting on TF yet because to be honest um, I don't think that you have to worry about him quite yet so you get ganked Rek'Sai flashes forward but you guys are gonna survive this gank it looks like to me uh, not if he gets CC'd though. Okay, good. He's able to get out. And then you're able to get this kill. Nice flash. Uh, flay them towards you. I don't know why we're flaying them away from us. That's a mechanical error, of course. I'm not gonna harp on it too hard, but you should be seeing that as an opportunity to get something else done. Now, this is great to go in there. May consider bringing the lantern with you if you want to, to make the trade smoother. You have red buff. Actually, let's back this up. Why aren't we bringing the lantern with us? What's up, Mishi? Why aren't we bringing the lantern with us here on this hook? What's the downside? Fuck that. Bring, throw the lantern behind you. You win this trade, you're right. You're right to go in here. It's a pretty sick hook and a pretty sick engage. Why not bring the lantern? Fuck that, bring Draven right there with you and shit on them. You have red buff Draven, uh, you're ahead. You're, you're meat shielding for your, for your AD carry there. Fucking bring him along. You have minions, like I see no downside to bringing him in there. You're gonna win that trade, 100%. Draven is a fucking bully and you already, you already blow their summoners so you know they don't have any yet. I guess uh, Leona's exhaust will be up, but still, you'll still win that shit. There was no, there was no downside to bringing him there. All right, now we're getting into hairy territory. You should know, you should know that this type of shit is coming. Okay, um, this is on you to think about this. Okay, Swain is back. DF's level six. All right. Um, you can see it so you can't engage right now. You just can't it's just it's the downside of TF um, You need to find better windows of time and right now is not one uh, A window of time that would make sense is like I don't know Yee's bottom and like Swain's you know pushing mid or something so you know that TF has to make a choice but here what are you gonna do when he when you engage here and he's right he's obviously gonna just come down and fuck you up all right, you it's not a warding issue and has nothing to do with that. It's just an awareness of what's happening around the map. You're uh, you are just kind of mindlessly hooking and going in, which is fine before TF is six. But when he's six, you have to think about the positioning on the map. And this is uh, information for you about this. All right. So <clears throat> as a mid laner, if TF is pushed to this turret, if he's pushed here, he's going to roam. All right. And I'm going to I'm going to show you. It's very simple to, to interdict this stuff. He has to push the lane first. There's his window of time right there. So guess what? You give him the absolute green light by going in here. So guess what? Unless you have Master Yi sitting in the bushes here, you can't do this. Because he is going to counter it 100% of the time after this push here. He doesn't even have to make a decision. Um, if Swain is here pushing, he can't go anywhere. But you see the map. The map tells you that he's going to be roaming here. It's a very easy roam. It's just like step into the brushes. That's literally, that's all he has to do is touch these brushes and he's in your lane. So he comes down, gets behind you, attacks you with some blue cards. You try to get the lantern. Um, 
But you basically engage into what's going to be a 3v2 90 to 100% of the time. That's on you. You have to know. You have to know. Um, Swain was back. Uh, you know, he really shouldn't be getting pushed around, but he is, whatever. But you have to react to that shit, okay? So, you know, that happens, whatever. It's okay. Let's see what else happens. You know, Gangplank. Uh, actually, I want to look at this, this fight again. Gangplank was dead, too. So, and he doesn't have six yet. So, yeah. Yeah, you're getting no help there. And you should know you're not getting any help. Like I said, if Yi was around, go in. Aggress, whatever. Worst case scenario is four bot. But, very unlikely. So now you're, like, moving around, uh... Trying to ward for this or whatever, I guess. I, th I assume that's your ward. Yes. Um, that's fine. But it's much simpler. It's much simpler than a ward, honestly. You don't need the ward to know that he's coming. Or that he's going to be coming. Uh, TF's ult cooldown is about two minutes, I believe. Yes. It's about two minutes before he can ult again. So, in a vacuum, every time he shows up, just remind yourself. As soon as he shows up, like around the time, two minutes from now, he's probably going to show up again. Um, here, obviously, the position of the lane, he isn't going to be showing up anytime soon. His mana, his health, he's not coming bot anytime soon. You should know that. Now you have a green light to go in, if you can get a hook. You know Swain's in the mid lane pushing it. So you know that TF can't be bottom at the moment. Because guess what's going to happen? This wave's obviously going to push to mid. You have a window of time. You should see this as a window of time that you can go in. Look for it. Look for the hook if you want it. Okay? I'm not saying it's going to be there. There's playing pretty far back. Um, but those are the windows of time. Okay? So now, you're going around uh, to Ward Dragon, looks like. That's great. I don't know if it's necessary, though, just because we know that they're probably not doing Dragon solo, but it's fine. Okay, so you flash flay. You miss the flay, but that's alright. You get in there, you do some great damage. You got global presence, gangplank ult, draven ult follow up. This is good. I like your aggression. I like the all in there. That's smooth, in my opinion. That's very, very good. So, you do manage to get the kill. Uh, you're roaming around the map now. Um, here, yes, dragon is, is good. With Yi and Draven, it's really good. Doing the right thing to focus on Dragon, try to zone the guy off towards the end. Got no problems with that. <clears throat> this is all fine. You're backing, that's good. I like the back after Dragon. I don't like staying in lane after Dragon. That's dangerous. That's a counter option, so that's good. Uh, going into lane now. TF's missing. Uh, and Swain's missing, so TF can technically go wherever he wants. You know he should have his ult up because he hasn't used it in a while. Don't just engage in. Don't just engage it. Uh, Swain is down two levels, which means he's bad, and you should be thinking he's bad. Notice the position of the lane here. <clears throat> that's actually a window where he can roam, where TF can roam. I want you to see it again. All TF has to do here, this wave is pushing. He can actually just walk here and, and ult down here. I want you to notice how the minions are set. Okay? The minions are pushing, clearly pushing. He's going to look to roam if he's good. Okay? I don't know why Swain's letting him get boss him around so much with, with an ignite, but whatever. He's a shitter. The fact is, this is probably going to be a roam a lot of the time. Although here, you're not really positioned to get ganked. He's looking. Notice. He's looking. He's looking down. That's why he's walking over here. He wants to know if it's possible to kill you. You guys back down. Why? You see him. Fuck that. He can't just warp to you. He can't just warp to you. Minions are here. You see him. It's when he leaves. It's when he steps away. You have to expect it. I know it takes extra awareness. That's the, you know... That's why TF's so good in solo queue. You don't have people in Skype like, yo, he's gonna ult you. <clears throat> so
so you can't really go in. I like your your positioning here. Uh, you're chasing really far. Let's back this up here and, and talk about this for a moment. All right, so you see Rexai, Yi sees Rexai. All right. Um, unfortunately, TF has position over you guys, and he's, you know, he's gonna just come down for that fight. He has the ignite, it looks like. Let's see this. You back away right away. Why? Uh, I feel like you miss an opportunity here. This TF's checkmated. But you don't seem to think that he's checkmated. And I don't know why. Look at this. You're coming up. You have position. You have boots. You have the support out of combat move speed. You see the fight breaking out. You move. You react. Look at the mini-map. This is a position that you should like. You should love this spot. Okay? You uh, you correctly bring Draven onto the, uh, the lantern. But then you get really, really fucking scared. Okay? You get really, really fucking scared. You bring him with you. You back away here. Why? Dumpster this fucking guy. Hook him. He's gone. You and Draven with a good hook, kill him. There's nothing he can do here. But you're playing really timid here, and I don't know why, alright? I don't like that. So TF vacates the premises, but you guys are chasing pretty hard. You drop the box to try to peel off the, the re-engage, which is pretty smart. I don't I don't think I mind that. Um, unfortunately, you have Rumble coming behind you, so you're kind of getting trapped into a fight that you don't really want to be a part of. Uh, because Rumble's just going to show up now and, and ice you guys, most likely. So... <clears throat> Unfortunately for you, this fight basically becomes whether or not you hit this hook here fast enough, in my opinion. So again, when you're coming up, the only way that this fight goes smoothly in this particular spot is if you immediately ISO the TF and, and knock him out. Uh, and then that would have cleaned up the entire fight. But you guys get kited around, waste a lot of cooldowns, chasing TF, uh, gangplank ults or whatever. Um, you use your box to try to disengage the fight, but then you re-engage it without the box. Um, that's what loses you the fight. So here, you back away instead of getting excited about the ult. You should have been thinking, wow, we're about to go 4v2 on our side of the map. These guys are out of position. This is 4v2. I should be stepping into this, flay, and hook this guy. He's dead. Okay? Um, it happens, but because you missed that hook, he buys enough time with a flash to cut you guys around and then you get re-engaged on, which sucks. So Rumble comes through with the teleport. Really bad teleport by Rumble, but it's really bad by you guys to stay into the fight for that long. Alright? That's how that all, that's how that all breaks down, basically. Obviously, Gangplank is walking instead of pushing. You know, he's bad. I, I don't know why he wouldn't, if he wanted to fight, I don't know why he wouldn't just teleport in. Uh, I would never be teleporting in. I would just be getting my Triforce. But hey, what do I know? What do I know? Uh, so yeah. Um, not much you can do there. Uh, you know, you play the early fights better. You get Draven a little bit more fed. Uh, you never know how these fights could look. Uh, if you don't blatantly go into a TF gank, TF might not be fed. Ganking you guys over and over again. Um, or bullying Swain around. These are things that you got to think about. This is not a bad, uh, not a bad play in my opinion. Um, it's just unfortunate that, you know, the follow-up isn't quite there. Um, I guess it's bad because Gangplank doesn't have items yet and you just saw him use the barrels. If he has, if Gangplank has Triforce, I think you can hold that, so. Uh, it's a tough spot to, to assess that you can't actually hook and go in there, I suppose. But it's close. It's close to being good. If if it, it's about thirteen thirty. Thank you for subscribing. Hey, Chrissy B. Now welcome to the Nisi Sub Train. Welcome to the Nisi Sub Train, man. Thank you. Oh wait, let me get the trains from YouTube here. I got double trains now. Wait, wait, wait.
Alright. Thanks, drop the sub hype train. Welcome this dude. So, in essence, um, this would be a pretty good point, I think, to stop this replay review. <clears throat> in essence, this is what this game comes down to, my friend. Um, you are playing a all-in aggression type of lane, okay? But you have to know that once, you have to know when your windows of time go away. Um, and it's basically just when TF hits six. You cannot hook in unless you see up here that, you know, Swain's pushing mid or TF is, you know, top or something. That's the only time that you can justify hooking in. And then you won't be in a position where TF throws the whole lane phase out of whack. Um, we don't have to keep going on three here because at this point, you know, we're behind and you really wanted to focus on, you know, what about TF roams? Like, where should I ward? It has nothing to do with roam. It has nothing to do with warding. It really doesn't. It's just either... He's in a position to roam or he's not. So, for example, here, he's obviously not in a position to roam. Okay? However, he's in a position to roam whenever you see him pushing, like right here. This is a perfect example. This, obviously, Swain's bottom because Swain can roam. TF now can roam because he's moving forward. That's it. That's it. There's no wards. There's no information beyond that that you need. Because TF isn't just gonna... There's one thing to remember about TF. He's not just like omnipotent. He can't just leave lane whenever he wants. He has to be pushing the waves first. So, you just have to assess. Is my laner getting pushed around by this TF? Okay, excellent. Then, if you want to make an aggressive move, your jungler needs to be around. That's it. And then, if TF's being pushed, then you know you can go in real fast and try to burst someone down. But it's very important that when you go in, you keep the, the, the trades very short and very succinct. None of this... And just like what happens later in the, the game, uh, looks like it's around, I think, like 1230 or whatever. Yeah. So here, it's a perfect example. Okay? Notice the difference. All right? If you guys fight this TF, if the trade is short and you knock him out of the fight quickly, you will win. If the trade is long, as in you don't knock him out as soon as he shows up with a teleport... And he gets to kite you around and reset stun cards over and over. That's when you're in trouble. So here, you have a window of time where ye could actually just go in on this guy. You guys could all just go in on him and kill him. But you don't get the hook off in time. Notice now, the fight extends. It prolongs. TF cycles stun cards over and over. And that's what fucks you guys up. He's even stun carding fucking red buffs instead of stun carding Swain. But just pulling you guys around the map like this... Keeping the trades long is what loses you these fights, okay? And as you can see, Rumble has time to show up because of it. Alright, so that's it, my friend. Keep trades short. Pre-6 versus TF. Like, pre-6 before he hits 6. That's your window. And then, if you're gonna go in, you just have to make sure that the mid, mid isn't pushing. Um, uh, you know, out, you know, outside of lane phase, it's different entirely, but we're focusing on lane phase and, and not letting him snowball off a of bot lane. So as long as you're looking and you see like Swain pushing the turret, you're fine to go in because if TF ults bottom with mid pushing, like mid blatantly pushing, then he's just going to miss a huge wave. Okay. All right. This is the first one we're doing today, boys. Uh, we're going to keep doing these. We're going to do a few more. Uh, YouTube, thank you so much for watching. This is a lot replay review with me, Nisi. Check out uh, twitch.tv slash Nisi or whatever. If you like the video, subscribe, like it. If you want your replays reviewed, submit them to law replay review at gmail.com. Uh, in summary, just remember, obviously, if TF has six, you got to play back until the lane's pushing. That's the big fucking takeaway from this, uh, this uh, review, okay? I'm out. Peace, crackers.